Hello team and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Tester Certification. As a part of this tutorial, we are still in chapter 3, continuing with the next segment that is 3.1.3, difference between closed loop and open loop. As a part of this tutorial, we'll be getting into more understanding on what exactly these loops are and how it will impact an automotive test environment. So as a part of test environment, it is used to stimulate the input interface of the device under test and monitor its output, though the output interfaces are also there. Afterwards, the behavior at the output interface is analyzed. In a successful test, the observed behavior corresponds to the expected output. Generally, there are two types of control system, closed loop and open loop. The difference relies on the way the electronic control unit reacts to its environment and this generates different simulation requirements for the virtual test environment. Now here we are generally trying to understand that how exactly a system will work when we talk about the open loop and the closed loop which are completely dependent on the output systems of these interfaces and the environment which we are using must simulate the same thing in order to test those functionalities and behavior of these outputs. So let's start with the first one here which is open loop system. In an open loop system, the output of the system have no relation to the inputs. The system is open-ended and there is no feedback. In this case, the inputs of the test items are directly defined by the tester in the test. Now, there is an example at the bottom, which if you look at it, which is completely taken from an automotive industry and we are trying to understand that what exactly is happening here. So for example, if you try to consider this, this example is an open loop control system of a vehicle going on the road. In this case, we will consider that the input is the engine torque, the system is the vehicle itself, and the output is the vehicle speed. The driver is trying to adjust the engine torque by pressing the accelerator paddle. But of course, the road has an inclination which is called as an inclination in the road which is a positive attribute to increase the height. And then definitely it means it will have a disturbance involved there. Now, if you look at the zone A, for a given position of the accelerator pedal, which the driver is trying to press, the engine will generate certain amount of torque, which will be applied to the wheels. If the road is straight, that is no gradient, the vehicle will speed with stabilized at a constant value. If you look at the zone B, where the inclination happens, which is considered as a road load disturbance, there, it has a positive gradient, that is inclination, which acts as a disturbance on the system. The driver doesn't change the position of the accelerator pedal, so the input torque will remain the same. But due to the uh, inclination, due to the road gradient, an open additional opposing force will be act on the vehicle, which will cause a slowdown. In this case, the driver didn't adjust the engine torque, function of the vehicle speed, drop or road gradient is a disturbance. But again, in zone C, it continues to be the same because the torque is applied is in the same way and it, there is no positive ingredient. That is the inclination is gone. Now you definitely the pace of the engine or the speed will come back to the normal speed. Similarly, if you look at the example of the closed loop system, the closed loop system is again, the simulation in this system, is, which is also known as in the loop, takes the output as a consideration. That means whatever the output is, based on that, the input will be adjusted accordingly. And here, the output of the system, uh, test item into the consideration for deciding what should happen next in order to meet the expectations and the behavior. This is done via the environment model itself, which collects the outputs and forwards them directly or indirectly to the input of the test item. So it's a completely closed loop where the feedback is collected and decided what input is required to maintain that particular speed. Now, therefore, a control loop is created in the test environment. Now, the same example is taken here to consider or understand what is a closed loop. So let's look at the same example. In this scenario, the vehicle will be in cruise control mode. That means the driver is not applying any speed or pressing the pedal manually. Okay, but the engine controls this module. Now, the cruise control function keeps a predefined vehicle speed set by the driver, of course, regardless of the road conditions by adjusting the engine torque accordingly. Now, in this case, if you look at the zone A, 
The vehicle speed is kept constant by the cruise control function. The engine torque is set to the constant value which will maintain the desired set speed. Now when we come to the zone B where we have an inclination, this time the input which is the engine torque is automatically increased. The positive road gradient causes an additional opposing force on the vehicle which should cause vehicle slowdown. But the cruise control function reaches the current vehicle speed and increases the engine torque in order to compensate for the road gradient. This way the vehicle speed is kept constant regardless of the disturbance. And zone C again the road gradient goes back to the zero therefore the opposing forces will decrease in order to prevent the vehicle to accelerate to a higher speed than the set one. The engine will, will be decreased further. This way the output vehicle speed will kept the same at the constant value which you initiated with. So now we have a good understanding of the open loop systems and closed loop systems. Where open loop systems do not have a feedback taken into consideration and the closed loop system takes or collects the output as an input uh, source for the further considerations. The next part of this particular tutorial we are trying to understand what are the essential interfaces databases and communication protocols of an ECU. A control unit in the automotive environment is an embedded system which consists of hardware and software. The ECU receives different analog and digital inputs which constantly collects environmental data in the form of voltage, current and temperature. Moreover, communication bus system provides further information to the control unit which comes from the sensors or other electronic control units which either collects the process, the information themselves, or generates them. The test object manages the data in the memory to process the output action, information, or data. The generated outputs are also carried out via analog and digital output pins, bus systems, or diagnosis interfaces. The database are data warehouses and define the input and output signals of the control unit. These data are also included in descriptions, units, and conversion formulas of the signals. When it comes to the communication protocols, it generally describes the data exchange via corresponding physical interfaces. These include protocols defined which voltage or bit sequence represent which value of the signal will be used. Here, the choice of the database and the database communication protocols depends on the function of the electronic control unit. For example, to access the diagnosis functions in the control unit, the tester needs to have the information about the used database. Also, open diagnostic data exchange system, which is one of the template of the database. And the communication protocols like unified diagnostic services as per ISO 14229, further automotive specific databases are defined for example in the ASAM standards. So you can look into more details of these standards to further explore it but these are very straightforward things to be remembered in order to clarify your concept in regarding the examination. So keep an idea on what kind of essential interfaces are required, the database which will be helpful in order to conduct the same and the communication protocols which are required for an ECU to be tested. Now, that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'll be always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.